Princess Mononoke. Princess Mononoke is set in the late Muromachi period, approximately 1336 to 1573, of Japan with fantasy elements. The story follows the young Amishi prince Ashitik's involvement in a struggle between the gods of a forest and the humans who consume its resources. The term or is not a name, but a Japanese word for a spirit or monster supernatural, shape-shifting beings. The film was released in Japan on July 12, 1997, and in the United States on October 29, 1999. It was a critical and commercial blockbuster, becoming the highest-grossing film in Japan of 1997, and also held Japan's box office record for Japanese-made films until 2001 Spirited Away. Another Miyazaki film. It was dubbed into English and distributed in North America by Miramax, and despite a poor box office performance there, it sold well on DVD and video, greatly increasing Ghibli's popularity and influence outside Japan. In Muromachi, Japan, an Amishi village is attacked by a demon. The last Amishi prince, Ashitaka, kills it before it reaches the village, but its corruption curses his right arm. The curse gives him superhuman strength but will eventually spread through his body and kill him. The villagers discover that the demon was a poor god, Nago, corrupted by an iron ball lodged in his body. The village's wise woman tells Ashitaka that he may find a cure in the western lands Nago came from, but he cannot return to his homeland. Heading west, Ashitaka meets Jigo, Jigo Bo in the original Japanese version, an opportunist Buddhist monk, who tells Ashitaka he may find help from the great forest spirit a deer-like animal god by day and a giant nightwalker by night. Nearby, men herd oxen to Irontown, Tatareba in Japanese, led by Lady Iboshi, and repel an attack by a wolf pack led by the wolf goddess Moro. Riding one of the wolves is San, a human girl. Ashitaka discovers two injured Irontown men and carries them through the forest, where he encounters many Kodama and glimpses the forest spirit. In Irontown, Ashitaka learns that Iboshi built the town by clear-cutting forests to claim iron sand and produce iron, leading to conflicts with the forest gods in Asano, a local daimyo. Iron Town is a refuge for social outcasts, including lepers employed to manufacture firearms, it was one of these guns that had wounded Nago. Iboshi also explains that San was raised by the wolves as one of their own and resents humankind. San infiltrates Iron Town to kill Iboshi but Ashitaka intervenes, knocking them both unconscious. As he leaves, he is shot by a villager, but the curse gives him the strength to carry San out of the village. San awakens and prepares to kill the weakened Ashitaka, but hesitates when he tells her that she is beautiful. She takes him to the forest, and decides to trust him after the forest spirit saves his life. A boar clan, led by the blind boar god Okoto, plans to attack Iron Town to Sabbath Forest. Iboshi prepares for battle and sets out to kill the forest spirit with Jigo, who is working for the government, she intends to give the god's head to the emperor in return for protection from Lord Asano. According to legend, the forest spirit's head grants immortality. Ashitaka recovers from his wound but remains cursed, he returns to Irontown to find it besieged by samurai, and heads out to warn Iboshi. The boar clan is annihilated in battle, and Okoto is corrupted by his wounds. Jigo's men disguise themselves and boar skins and trick the rampaging Okoto into letting them to the forest spirit. San tries to stop Okoto, but is swept up in his demonic corruption. Moro intervenes and Ashitaka dives into the corruption, saving San. The forest spirit euthanizes Okoto and Moro. As it transforms into the Nightwalker, Iboshi decapitates it. It bleeds ooze which spreads over the land, killing anything it touches as the Nightwalker searches for its head which Jigo steals. The forest and Kodama begin to die, Moro's head comes alive and bites off Obosha's right arm, but she survives. After the samurai flee and Iron Town is evacuated, Ashitaka and San pursue Jigo and retrieve the head, returning it to the forest spirit. The spirit dies as the sun rises, but its form washes over the land and heals it, and Ashitaka's curse is lifted. Ashitaka stays to help rebuild Iron Town, but promises San he will visit her in the forest. Iboshi reunites with the townspeople and vows to build a better town. The forest begins to regrow, and a Kodama emerges from the undergrowth. The cast also includes, Akira Nagoya as the, Kimihiro Rizii as a, Tetsu Watanabe as a, Makoto Sato as, a wild boar turned into a demon who curses Ashitaka when attacks the Amishi village, and Sumi Shimamoto as, Koroku's wife, a former prostitute, and the leader of Iboshi's women, 
voiced by Jada Pinkett Smith in the English version. In the late 1970s, Miyazaki drew sketches of a film about a princess living in the woods with a beast. Miyazaki began writing the film's plotline and drew the initial storyboards for the film in August 1994. He had difficulties adapting his early ideas and visualizations, because elements had already been used in My Neighbor Totoro and because of societal changes since the creation of the original sketches and image boards. This writer's block prompted him to accept a request for the creation of the On Your Mark promotional music video for the Chajin Aska song of the same title. According to Toshio Suzuki, the diversion allowed Miyazaki to return for a fresh start one creation of Princess Mononoke. In April 1995, Supervising animator Masashi Ando devised the character designs from Miyazaki's storyboard. In May 1995, Miyazaki drew the initial storyboards. That same month, Miyazaki and Ando went to the ancient forests of Yakushima, of Kyushu, an inspiration for the landscape of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, and the mountains of Shirakami Sanki in northern Honshu for location scouting along with a group of art directors, background artists, and digital animators for three days. Animation production commenced in July 1995. Miyazaki personally oversaw each of the 144,000 cells in the film, and is estimated to have redrawn parts of 80,000 of them. The final storyboards of the film's ending were finished only months before the Japanese premiere date. Inspired by John Ford, an Irish-American director best known for his westerns, Miyazaki created Iron Town as a tight-knit frontier town and populated it with characters from outcast groups and oppressed minorities who rarely, if ever, appear in Japanese films. He made the characters yearning, ambitious and tough. Miyazaki did not want to create an accurate history of medieval Japan, and wanted to portray the very beginnings of the seemingly insoluble conflict between the natural world and modern industrial civilization. The landscapes appearing in the film were inspired by Yakushima. Despite being set during the Muromachi period, the actual time period of Princess Mononoke depicts a symbolic never-when clash of three proto-Japanese races, the Jomon, Yumato and Imishi. Princess Mononoke was produced with an estimated budget of 2.35 billion yen, approximately 23.5 million US dollars. It was mostly hand-drawn but incorporates some use of computer animation during five minutes of footage throughout the film. The computer animated parts are designed to blend in and support the traditional cell animation, and are mainly used in images consisting of a mixture of computer-generated graphics and traditional drawing. A further 10 minutes uses inked and painted, a technique used in all subsequent Studio Ghibli films. Most of the film is colored with traditional paint, based on the color schemes designed by Miyazaki and Michio Yasuda. However, Producers agreed on the installation of computers to successfully complete the film prior to the Japanese premiere date. Two titles were originally considered for the film. One, ultimately chosen, has been translated into English as Princess Mononoke. The other title can be translated into English as either The Story of Ashitaka or The Legend of Ashitaka. In a Tokyo Broadcasting System program, televised on November 26, 2013, Toshio Suzuki mentioned that Hayao Miyazaki had preferred The Legend of Ashitaka as the title while Suzuki himself favored Princess Mononoke. Suzuki also mentioned that Miyazaki had created a new kanji to write his preferred title. The English dub contains minor additional voiceovers to explain nuances of Japanese culture to Western audiences. A central theme of Princess Mononoke is the environment. The film centers on the adventure of Ashitaka as he journeys to the west to undo a fatal curse inflicted upon him by Nago, a boar turned into a demon by Iboshi. Michelle J. Smith and Elizabeth Parsons said that the film makes heroes of outsiders in all identity politics categories and blurs the stereotypes that usually define such characters. In the case of the Dear God's destruction of the forest in Tataraba, Smith and Parsons said that the supernatural forces of destruction are unleashed by humans greedily consuming natural resources. They also characterized Iboshi as a businesswoman who has a desire to make money at the expense of the forest, and also cite Iboshi's intention to destroy the forest to mine the mountain embodies environmentalist evil. Two other themes found in the plot of Princess Mononoke are sexuality and disability. Speaking at the International Symposium on Leprosy, Hansen's Disease History in Tokyo, Miyazaki explained that he was inspired to portray people living with leprosy, said to be an incurable disease caused by bad karma after visiting the Tamazenshun Sanatorium near his home in Tokyo. Lady Iboshi is driven by her compassion for the disabled, and believes that blood from the great forest spirit could allow her to cure, 
Her, Poor Lepers. Michelle Jarman, Assistant Professor of Disability Studies at the University of Wyoming, and Yoon Jung Kim, Assistant Professor of Gender on Women's Studies at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, said the disabled and gendered sexual bodies were partially used as a transition from the feudal era to a hegemony that embraces modern social systems, such as industrialization, gendered division of labor, institutionalization of people with diseases, and militarization of men and women. They likened Lady Eboshi to a monarch. Kim and Jarman suggested that Eboshi's disregard of ancient laws and curses towards prostitutes and lepers was Enlightenment reasoning and her exploitation of disabled people furthered her modernist viewpoints. Kim and Jarman conclude that Lady Eboshi's supposed benevolence in incorporating lepers and prostitutes into her society leverages the social stigma attached to marginalized groups, pointing out that the hierarchical structures within Irontown still support the stigmatization of lepers and prostitutes. An additional theme is the morally ambiguous conflict between humankind's growth and development and nature's need for preservation. Noted by Roger Ebert in his 1999 review, it is not a simplistic tale of good and evil, but the story of how humans, forest animals, and nature gods all fight for their share of the new emerging order. Billy Crudup, who provided the English voice for Ashitaka, said the movie was such an entirely different experience, it had a whole new sensibility I had never seen in animation. It also had something profound to say, that there has to be a give and take between man and nature. One of the things that really impressed me is that Miyazaki shows life in all its multifaceted complexity, without the traditional perfect heroes and wicked villains. Even Lady Eboshi, who Ashitaka respects, is not so much evil as short sighted. Minnie Driver, the English voice actress for Lady Eboshi, commented similarly It's one of the most remarkable things about the film. Miyazaki gives a complete argument for both sides of the battle between technological achievement and our spiritual roots in the forest. He shows that good and evil, violence and peace exist in us all. It's all about how you harmonize it all. Developing the idea of moral ambiguity in this film, there is no clear good versus evil conflict in Princess Mononoke, unlike other films popular with children. Based on the multiple point of views the film adopts, San and Lady Eboshi can simultaneously be viewed as heroic or villainous. San defends the forest and viewers empathize with her. But she also attacks innocent people, complicating how we evaluate her. Opposed to San, Lady Eboshi tries to destroy the forest and could be considered a villain. But everything she does is out of a desire to protect her village and see it prosper. She saves prostitutes and lepers, providing both with jobs. She is not an unkind woman. She destroys the forest so that she can provide for her people, by mining the iron beneath the mountain. San and Lady Eboshi survive until film's end, defying the usual convention of good triumphing over evil with the antagonist defeated. The resolution of the conflict is left ambiguous, implying that Lady Eboshi and San will be able to come to some sort of compromise. The ambiguity suggests there are no true villains or heroes. It may be that Lady Eboshi and San will work towards compromise and find some peace. Dan Jolin of Empire said that a potential theme could be that of lost innocence. Miyazaki attributes this to his experience of making his previous film, Porco Rosso, and the wars in the former Yugoslavia, which he cites as an example of mankind never learning, making it difficult for him to go back to making a film such as Kiki's Delivery Service, where he has been quoted as saying it felt like children were being born to this world without being blessed. How could we pretend to them that we're happy? Duality is central to understanding Lady Eboshi, who is at odds with the film's namesake, Princess Mononoke, also known as San. It is apparent that San plays a heroic role, and at first glance Lady Eboshi appears to be San's antagonist as well as the film's villain. A closer look, however, reveals that Lady Eboshi plays a dual role. In mining the forest Lady Eboshi destroys it. And yet she does not fully understand the harm her destruction of nature does to the spirits who live there. Her focus is on creating a safe home for her people. She holds no malicious intent toward nature and its spirits until they begin attacking her people. Once nature attacks, she gathers her soldiers to protect the inhabitants of her town, a place where all are welcome. Iron Town is a haven for prostitutes and lepers. She brings them to Iron Town and gives them jobs, hospitality, and a kindness that they have never experienced before. The same treatment goes for all Iron Town's inhabitants, not just the sickly and the scorned. Lady Eboshi treats everyone equally, no matter the race, sex, or history of the individual, creating a caring community. While Lady Eboshi hates San and the forest spirits, she keeps a garden in her town. Her care for the garden implies that her intention is not to ravage nature to no end.
but rather to create something beautiful for her own people, Tevanon, 2013. Due to her kindness and fair treatment, the townspeople truly respect her and gladly follow her into battle. Therefore, although Lady Eboshi can be seen as the film's villain, she is also a hero to the citizens of Iron Town and to humankind in general. Ashitaka mediates peace, acting as a go-between for Iron Town and the creatures of the forest. In the world of stories, a hero is often judged by his amazing feats with little focus on his actual role in society. Cursed for killing a nature god gone berserk, Ashitaka is different, he is innately connected to both people and nature. Despite his curse, Ashitaka works selflessly throughout the film, extending his own inner peace to others around him. He actively strives to remain unbiased and in doing so, works to foster a sense of balance in Iron Town and the forest creatures. Both sides are stubborn and refuse to heed him, nearly destroying themselves by their refusal to compromise. In his efforts for peace, Ashitaka keeps San and Lady Iboshi from killing each other. Despite being shot by an Iron Town villager, he continues to mediate between the two. His selflessness wins him their trust. While he cannot force San to befriend Lady Iboshi, Ashitaka does establish an uneasy peace between them, suggesting the possibility of a better future. Princess Mononoke was released theatrically in Japan on July 12, 1997. The film was extremely successful in Japan and with both anime fans and art house moviegoers in English speaking countries. In 1998, the Walt Disney Company acquired the North American film rights to Princess Mononoke. Disney was to release it through its independent subsidiary Miramax Films. According to rumor, when Miyazaki met with Harvey Weinstein, the chairman of Miramax Films, Weinstein demanded that edits should be made to Princess Mononoke. In response, Miyazaki sent Weinstein a katana with a message stating no cuts. The English dub of Princess Mononoke is a translation with some adaptation by fantasy author Neil Gaiman, author of The Sandman. The main changes from the Japanese version are to provide a cultural context for phrases and actions which those outside of Asia may not be familiar with. Such alterations include references to mythology and specific names for groups, such as Jai Bashri and Shishigami, that appear in the Japanese version, which are changed to more general terms, such as mercenary and forest spirit, in the English version. The rationale for such changes is that the majority of non-Japanese viewers would not understand the mythological references and that the English language simply has no words for the Jaibashri, Shishigami and other terms. Miramax chose to put a large sum of money into creating the English dub of Princess Mononoke with famous actors and actresses, yet when they released it in theaters tier was little or no advertising and it was given a very limited run, showing in only a few theaters and for a very short time. Disney later complained about the fact that the movie did not do well at the box office. In September 2000, the film was announced for release on DVD in North America exclusively with the English dub. In response to fans' requests to add the Japanese track as well as threats of poor sales, Miramax hired translators for subtitles for the Japanese version. This plan delayed the DVD release back by almost three months, but it sold well when it was finally released. On April 29, 2000, the English dub version of Princess Mononoke was released theatrically in Japan along with the documentary Mononoke Haim in USA. The documentary was directed by Tasha Kazusato and featured Miyazaki visiting the Walt Disney Studios and various film festivals. Princess Mononoke was the highest grossing Japanese film of 1997, earning 11.3 billion yen in distribution receipts. It became the highest grossing film in Japan on Thailand was surpassed by Titanic several months later. The film earned a domestic total of 14,518,798,588 yen and 39 sen, $148 million. It was the top selling anime in the United States in January 2001. But despite this the film did not fare as well financially in the country when released in December 1997. It grossed $2,298,191 for the first eight weeks. Although it showed more strength worldwide where it earned a total of $11 million with a total of 14,487,325,138 yen, $159,375,308. In Japan the film was released on VHS by Buena Vista Home Entertainment on June 26, 1998. A Laserdisc edition was also released by Tokuma Japan Communications in the same day. 
The film was released on DVD by Buena Vista Home Entertainment on November 21, 2001 with bonus extras added, including the international versions of the film as well as the storyboards. By 2007, Princess Mononoke sold 4.4 million home video units in Japan. At an average retail price of, on DVD and on VHS, this is equivalent to approximately, in Japanese sales revenue as of 2012. In July 2000, Buena Vista Home Entertainment announced plans to release the film on VHS and DVD in North America on August 29. Initially, the DVD version of Princess Mononoke did not include the Japanese language track at the request of Buena Vista's Japan division, citing concerns that a foreign release DVD containing the Japanese language track will allow for the importation of such a DVD to Japan, which could seriously hurt the local sales of a futuri release of the film. The fans at Nausicaa.net organized an email campaign for fans to include the Japanese language track, while DVD Talk began an online petition to retain the Japanese language track. The DVD release of Princess Mononoke was delayed as a result. Buena Vista Home Entertainment released the DVD in July 2000 with the original Japanese audio, the English dubbed audio and extras including a trailer and a documentary with interviews from the English dub voice actors. The film was released on Blu-ray disc in Japan on December 4, 2013. Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment released Princess Mononoke on Blu-ray disc on November 18, 2014. In its first week, it sold 21,860 units and grossed $502,332 in the United States, by November 23, 2014. It was later included in the Blu-ray Miyazaki collection, released on November 17, 2015. Kids reissued the film on Blu-ray and DVD on October 17, 2017. Princess Mononoke received critical acclaim from film critics. As of March 2018, the film review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes reported a 93% approval rating based on 107 reviews, with an average rating of 8 tenths. It offers the consensus, with its epic story and breathtaking visuals, Princess Mononoke is a landmark in the world of animation. On Metacritic, the film achieved an average score of 76 out of 100 based on 29 reviews, signifying generally favorable reviews. The Daily Yomiri S. Aaron Giro called the film a powerful compilation of, Hayao, Miyazaki's world, a cumulative statement of his moral and filmic concerns. Leonard Clady of Variety said that Princess Mononoke is not only more sharply drawn, it has an extremely complex and adult script and the film has the solo for romantic epic, and its lush tones, elegant score by Joe Hisaishi and full-blooded characterizations give it the sweep of cinema's most grand canvases. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times called Princess Mononoke a great achievement and a wonderful experience, and one of the best films of the year, you won't find many Hollywood love stories, animated or otherwise, so philosophical. Tidebur of Entertainment Weekly called the film a windswept pinnacle of its art and that it has the effect of making the average Disney film look like just another toy story. However, Stephen Hunter of the Washington Post stated that that film is as spectacular as it is dense and as dense as it is colorful and as colorful as it is meaningless and as meaningless as it is long. And it's very long. Kenneth Turan of the Los Angeles Times said that the film brings a very different sensibility to animation, a medium, Miyazaki, views as completely suitable for straight dramatic narrative and serious themes. In his review, Dave Smith from Gamers Republic called it one of the greatest animated films ever created and easily one of the best films of 1999. Roger Ebert placed Princess Mononoke 6th on his top 10 movies of 1999. It ranked 488th on Empire's list of the 500 greatest films. Time Out ranked the film 26th on 50 greatest animated films. It also ranked 26th on Total Films list of 50 greatest animated films. Princess Mononoke is the first animated feature film to win Best Picture in the Japan Academy Prize. For the 70th Academy Awards ceremony, Princess Mononoke was the Japanese submission to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, but was not successfully nominated. Hayao Miyazaki was also nominated for an Annie Award for his work on the film. The film score of Princess Mononoke was composed and performed by Joe Hisaishi, the soundtrack composer for nearly all of Miyazaki's productions, and Miyazaki wrote the lyrics of the two vocal tracks the Tatara Women Work Song and its title song. The music was performed by Tokyo City Philharmonic Orchestra and conducted by Hiroshi Kumagai.
The soundtrack was released in Japan by Tokuma Japan Communications on July 2, 1997, and the North American version was released at B Milan Records on October 12, 1999. The titular theme song was performed by countertenor Yoshikazu Mera. For the English adaptation, Sasha Lazard sang the song. As with other Studio Ghibli films, additional albums featuring soundtrack themes and alternative versions have been released. The Image album features early versions of the themes, recorded at the beginning of the film production process, and used as source of inspiration for the various artists involved. The Symphonic Suite features longer compositions, each encompassing several of the movie themes, performed by the Czech Philharmonic Orchestra conducted by Mario Clemens. In 2012, it was announced that Studio Ghibli and British theatre company Ho Hog Theatre would be bringing Princess Mononoke to the stage. It is the first stage adaptation of a Studio Ghibli work. The contact between Ho Hog Theatre and Studio Ghibli was facilitated by Nick Park of Ardman Animations after he sent footage of Ho Hog performances to Studio Ghibli's Toshio Suzuki. The play features large puppets made out of recycled and reclaimed materials. The first performances were scheduled for London's New Diorama Theatre and sold out in 72 hours, a year in advance. In March 2013, it was announced that the show would transfer to Japan after its first run of shows in London. A second series of performances followed in London after the return from Tokyo. The second run of London performances sold out in four and a half hours. The play received positive reviews and was one of Lynn Gardner's theatre picks in The Guardian. On April 27, 2013, the play was presented at Nico Nico Duga's Cho Party and was streamed online in Japan. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.